Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio is known for its huge collection of roller coasters, rides, and even slides located at the adjacent Cedar Point Shores Water Park. Their attraction collections are unique and significant, with many rides around the park. Today, in order to determine which rides you should ride during your visit to the park, I took the big task of ranking every single attraction in the park from worst to best. Here you will find every adult ride and slide in the park ranked from worst to best. Just some background information, there will be no kitty rides except for the two kitty coasters, as probably no one watching this video really cares about where each of the nearly identical kitty rides place. Instead, you will see separate slide complexes, unique flats, and all of the coasters ranked up. Let's get into it. 53. Midway Carousel The first attraction you can enter when you enter the park, and also the oldest ride in the park. Opening back in the 40s, the Midway Carousel is an iconic piece of history, but like most carousels, it doesn't need to be ridden. It's nice to watch and listen to when around, but the slow circular motion doesn't make for that exciting of a ride. 52. Wilderness Run Formerly, Junior Gemini is the smallest coaster in the park and is also Intamin's first ever creation. Similarly to Midway Carousel, unless you're looking for the credit, there really is no reason in riding Wilderness Run. It's very small and just wraps around a couple of trees before entering the brake run. 51. Matterhorn Matterhorn, formerly located near Corkscrew but now located on the new boardwalk, was my personal least favorite thrill flat ride. Matterhorn, unlike most of the other spinning rides in the park, provides no real force and instead provides the bumpiest experience on any flat in the park. Matterhorn has guests constantly hitting their heads on the hard plastic cars. Just avoid Matterhorn unless you love fast spinning. 50. Cedar Creek Mine Ride This was the first attraction in Frontier Town, opening way back in 1969, and it's by far the worst thrill coaster in the park. Cedar Creek Mine Ride is full of whiplash on every turn. Because of the janky track profiling, the trains jerk into every transition, which is either abnormally rough or slow. Cedar Creek Mine Ride, even for seasoned enthusiasts, is really impossible to enjoy. 49. Ocean Motion We're out of the bad rides now, and up next is Ocean Motion, an amusement park staple. However, this pirate ship attraction is on the smaller side, and apart from the cool Halloween theming of Ocean Potion, there really is no appeal to this ride compared to other pirate rides. It's a bit smaller, has a shorter cycle, and has little airtime. 48. Cedar Creek Cedar Creek is our first Cedar Point Shores attraction, and it's just a typical Lazy River. Lazy Rivers are nice every once in a while, and while this one is pretty relaxing near the beach and with a tunnel near the end of the experience, it's just a Lazy River. And in a park full of roller coasters and huge slides, it can only rank so high. Number 47. Woodstock Express This is the other kiddie coaster in the park, and this one being much larger. Woodstock Express is a short but actually quite intense experience for a kiddie coaster. This is definitely one you shouldn't skip on your credit hunt. It's still just a kiddie coaster though, so it can't place higher than this. Number 46, Cadillac Cars. Cadillac Cars are the last car ride in the park after the removal of Antique Autos in 2021. It's a nice addition to the front of the park with a cool bridge and a scenic ride around Raptor and Val Raven. However, this car ride doesn't have that unique of a layout, and also the cars are pretty slow compared to other Antique Cars rides. Number 45, Breakwater Bay. Breakwater Bay is the only wave pool at Cedar Point Shores, and it's pretty good. It has a lot of chairs and a short timer, but the waves don't last nearly as long as other parks and they aren't very big. I recommend a couple of rounds at Breakwater Bay, but you shouldn't need any more. Number 44, Thunder Canyon. Thunder Canyon in the dry park is a glorified lazy river. Instead of controlling your own raft, you strap into a raft and force to get your shoes and socks wet unless you take them off. I personally don't like raft rides except for Mystic River Falls, but some rapids in Thunder Canyon are rather strong. There are also a couple of waterfalls scattered throughout. 43, Runaway Rapids. Runaway Rapids is just a better Thunder Canyon. Located in Cedar Point Shores, Runaway Rapids is just a lazy river with different paths, waterfalls, water canyons, and water buckets. It's a hazardous river and a very fun time. The only thing held against Runaway Rapids is the horrible ground, which is made of rough stones. 42. Cedar Point and Lake Erie Railroad This is the worst of the two transportation rides in the park, mainly because of the long wait in between cycles, but the train is a peaceful journey. The track from Frontier Station is better than the lakeside track as you travel through Boneville and Frontier Town, but both tracks are a fun break from walking. 41. Monster Similarly to the last ride, Monster takes a very long loading cycle. Also, compared to the other spinning flats in the park, Monster is underwhelming. It has a couple of negatives every now and then, but other than that, it's a bland experience near Gemini Midway. 40. Dodgems Dodgems is a self-explanatory ride. It's located on the new boardwalk with many cars to collide with. The seats are comfy, but the cycle is very short. It's a nice ride and is fantastic to ride with friends, but underwhelming compared to other rides in the park. Number 39, Skyride. 
Skyride is the other transport ride in Cedar Point, but instead of staying on the ground in the woods, Skyride flies high above the midway. It's a more peaceful and much prettier experience compared to the train, and while shorter, it gets you across the midway much easier than the train does. 38. Corkscrew We're back with the coasters, and Cedar Point's first looping coaster isn't as bad as everyone says. Corkscrew has a strong ejector hill, and while the loop and corkscrews are pretty bumpy, it's not headache-inducing and the elements are rather intense. Skip corkscrew if you don't really like bumpy rides. 37. Scrambler Here is another classic flat ride being relocated to the new boardwalk. In 2023, it will be known as the Atomic Scrambler. Scrambler is one of our favorite flats because of the short waits, but looking back, it's not anything special. The ride has strong laterals on each turn, but has a relatively short ride cycle. It's still fun to ride every once in a while, though. 36. Wave Swinger Wave Swinger is the smallest flat ride in Frontier Town, and it is a very nice location near Mavericks Lake. The chain seats add an extra layer of fear to the ride as it feels very old school and classic. When up in the air swinging around, it's very peaceful and fun on each of the apexes, which provides a little pop of airtime. 35. Super Himalaya I barely ever ride Super Himalaya, as it's forgettable in a park like this. However, I'm always surprised by the force on this ride. For the duration of the ride, you are pinned on the left side of your seat from the number of laterals provided. There's also bunny hops in the ride cycle, which throws the rider forward a little bit. Super Himalaya is a pretty intense flat ride. 34. Cedar Downs Cedar Downs is the most extreme ride in the park without a restraint. This is another carousel, but it is a rarer kind. Instead of a slow experience, Cedar Down races around with intense racing music in the background and an announcer telling everyone about the horses. The ride gets very fast at points, and it's a nice competition with your friends. 33. Tiki Twirl Tiki Twirl is undergoing another name change this year, being rethemed Calypso. Tiki Twirl is similar to Scrambler with the ride cycle, however, the ride is tilted and some of the turns are a lot speedier. So the laterals are stronger and a little more sustained. 32. Snake River Expedition Snake River Expedition is the newest ride in the park before the boardwalk, and it is a slow but very relaxing experience. Riders take part in a journey around Adventure Island and witness many actors and animatronics throughout the story. It's entertaining and serves as a great break from the rest of the park. 31. Snake River Falls Snake River Falls is the shoot-the-shoot -shoot ride in the park, and it creates quite a large splash. Again, however, dry park water rides are not as appealing as those in the water park, but Snake River Falls' huge drop and splash make it exciting to watch. 30. Perch Plunge We're getting into most of the slides now, which are very similar to one another. The worst slide is Perch Plunge, a body slide. Body slides, in my opinion, aren't as appealing as raft slides, but Perch Plunge is still is a tall and enjoyable body slide with an exciting splash down at the end. 29. Lake Erie Nor'easter this is the least exciting raft slide in the park. There are no big drops, and instead it takes place in an extremely dark tube for the whole ride, with some surprising waterfalls littered throughout. It makes for a surprising experience, but isn't as thrilling as other rides. 28. Wild Walleye These raft slides are in the same structure as Perch Plunge. They are a little shorter in height, but are a speedier experience with another exciting splash down to conclude the ride. 27. Lake Erie Eagles Lake Erie Eagles is one of the newer flats in the park, and is quickly becoming an amusement park classic. The flying scooter ride encourages riders to snap the cars, basically whipping riders around and giving an airtime sensation. While this one doesn't snap the best, it's still a very fun ride. 26. Cross Current This water slide is nearly identical to Wild Walleye, however this complex places higher for two reasons. One, the main raft slides are much higher, causing a better experience. Also, Cross Current has a smaller blue side that has an extremely steep double down drop, so the slide provides a little pop of airtime. 25. Riptide Raceway I'm not a huge fan of these slides where you lay on your stomach on a raft, but I will admit, the racing aspect in the tight tube is very fun. Seeing which one of your friends will win the race after flying down a large drop is pretty thrilling. 24. Troika 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 This flat ride is pretty standard, but very fun. Basically, take Scrambler and tilt it on its side. Then, you have Troika. On every apex, you get good airtime mixed with some decent laterals on most of the turns. Troika is a very fun experience. 23. Storm Surge This is one of my favorite water slides in the park. Storm Surge has a huge raft holding up around 7 guests depending on weight, sending riders flying down very steep turns. These turns cause the raft to fly up so it feels like guests will fly out of the raft. With a nice splash down at the end, Storm Surge is a must ride. 22. Iron Dragon Back to the coasters, we have Iron Dragon. Iron Dragon is a very fun but not intense or thrilling coaster. The tight turns through the woods with minor swinging are great for families, but for enthusiasts there are better coasters in the park. 21. Portside Plunge this is, in my opinion, the best raft slide in the park. While both sides of Portside Plunge are shorter, the ride packs a punch. Both sides start with a dark tunnel, which then enters either a huge drop or an aggressive double down depending on which side you ride. I prefer the double down side on Portside Plunge. 20. Gemini 
Gemini is a fantastic gateway coaster. I don't enjoy it as much as other people do as the slow turns ruin the pacing, but some of the hills provide okay air time and the head choppers at some points are very scary. Also, the racing aspect, similar to Riptide Raceway, makes for a more thrilling aspect of the experience. 19. Power Tower Dropside We're getting to our flat rides as voted on by the viewers a few days ago. Power Tower Dropside was voted the worst and I have to agree. This is the only drop tower to my knowledge that is pretty painful on the jolt when the ride reaches the top and drops. The restraints are pretty uncomfortable. Also, the airtime isn't as sustained as some of the other drop towers out there. 18. Blue Streak The only wooden coaster in the park is pretty thrilling. While some may find it a little bumpy, the rumble adds to the chaos as this ride has some pretty good airtime on the outwards run. The return run is a little slower, however. 17. Point Plummet This is the best Cedar Point Shores attraction. Point Plummet is a typical trapdoor slide, which immediately makes it the most thrilling in the park. The tubes are tight, causing some scary moments, and the floor dropping element creates about 2 seconds where the riders are completely free falling. 16. Pipe Scream Pipe Scream, which isn't a coaster, is one of our favorite rides to hop on. It's one of the floatiest rides in the park and is basically a pendulum ride on rails, making it full of floater airtime on each of the hills. In addition to the spinning, you can get some really unique feelings on Pipe Scream. 15. Professor Delbert's Frontier Fling While I personally haven't ridden this sky coaster, I have seen videos and others ride the ride. These sky coasters are a terrifying experience, as it takes the flying coaster type seating into the free fall. However, the ride has a weird loading and unloading mechanism, but it's a lot of fun while it lasts for riders. It's too bad the ride has an upcharge fee. 14. Windseeker Another ride voted on by the viewer. Windseeker is a massive 300-foot swing ride right on the shores of Lake Erie. It's very scary with Lake Erie winds and waves below, but it makes for a scary and also beautiful experience high above the park. 13. Rougarou Rougarou is a forgettable coaster, but it has some pretty intense elements. While the second half can really hurt your ears if you're not prepared enough, the Titan versions can cause some fun positives and negatives. Rougarou is a nice ride to hop on when the line is short. 12. Power Tower Launch Side Unlike the drop side, there is no jolt to this drop tower. The launch side is similar, but instead of the strong negatives first, you experience sudden positives that are very fun before heading up to the sky, where you experience some very strong negatives. 11. Magnum I'm not a huge fan of Magnum, but I know some people love it, and I can see why. This ride has the strongest airtime in the park by far, to the point where it's a little too much for some riders. The restraints are very uncomfortable, but Magnum is a super intense experience. While it is impossible to re-ride multiple times in a row, it's good old school fun. Number 10. Max Air this is my personal favorite flat ride, but again, I consider the viewers' votes in this place here. Max Air is like an upscaled pipe scream minus the track. Riders are spinning high above the beds, in some cases beyond vertical. On every apex, no matter where you're sitting, you'll flow out of your seat and even get some strong stomach-twisting sensations. Number 9. Slingshot The last upcharge attraction is Slingshot. Again, I've never ridden, but I know how the experience should be nonetheless. Slingshot starts with a launch, but straight up. This causes some good force before you launch over 360 feet into the sky. Once in the sky, riders will twist and rotate, flipping multiple times in some good negatives and forward G-forces. 8. Skyhawk The last flat ride on the list before the run of coasters is Skyhawk. And what a great flat ride. While I prefer Max Air, this was the viewer's favorite flat ride in the park. Skyhawk is like Max Air, but without rotating. This ride is pure floater airtime bliss, with very, very open lap bars so you get maximum stomach twisting and floater airtime. 7. Valraven While this coaster is a little hated by enthusiasts for the short and unoriginal layout, I can't deny that this ride has some great airtime and drops. The first drop has airtime for the whole duration, and the third inversion has some great hang time. Valraven is just a pure fun coaster. Number 6. Gatekeeper Gatekeeper is similar to the last ride. It's a little hated by enthusiasts, but the hang time filled first drop is terrifying in the front rows, and the head choppers are always fun. Even the little airtime hill provides some good floater air. Number 5. Raptor I just made a video about Raptor about a week ago, so go check it out for more details, but Raptor is an absolutely fantastic roller coaster. It's probably the most intense operating coaster in the park, with limb numbing transitions and very whippy inversions. If you know how to ride, it might just be your favorite invert. 4. Maverick Maverick is arguably the most praised ride in the park. It has every element you could ask for. While I don't like the restraints that much, the extreme whip in every transition, launch, and an extreme ejector airtime make Maverick the most aggressive ride in the park. Number 3. Millennium Force Millennium is definitely not forceless. Some of the valleys and overbanks may be gray out from laterals and positives, and the first two airtime hills have some very sustained floater. It's not super intense from start to finish, but it maintains its speed well and is just another pure fun coaster that never gets old. Number 2. Top Throw Dragster We don't really know what's going on with Top Throw Dragster, but if it's anywhere similar to how it was before, it'll definitely be in the top 5 still. 
Launching that high and that fast makes it a great candidate for the number two spot. Your stomach will twist the whole launch and you are thrown out of your seat for the entirety of that 400 foot drop. In addition, both valleys feel like the most intense parts of any coaster in the whole state. Number 1. Steel Vengeance What else could top Steel Vengeance? Steel Vengeance is a combination of every great coaster element. Outer banks, stalls, and airtime hills, top hats, and 90 degree hit drops. It's a whippy, relatively intense, airtime packed, and lateral filled experience from start to finish. Steel Vengeance is one of the best roller coasters in the world, and my personal favorite coaster I've ridden. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment your placements on Cedar Point's rides below and have a great rest of your day.